Hello everyone, my name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, let's try to understand what is generative AI in very simple way. If you are a software engineer or a student, you would have definitely heard about this term called generative AI at least once in the last 12 months. Of course, the reason is quite obvious because of ChatGPT. But what if I tell you that ChatGPT is just a tip of iceberg? ChatGPT uses LLMs or GPTs, which is just one part of generative AI. Okay, so what is generative AI? Let's come to that. Generative AI is a type of artificial intelligence which is capable of creating or generating new content. Let's try to understand with real life examples. On a day to day basis, we all use traditional AI. For example, Kindle or Netflix. You create an account with Netflix, watch different kinds of movies. After a month, Netflix traditional artificial intelligence will be capable of recommending new movies for you. Or Kindle's traditional artificial intelligence will be capable of recommending new books or suggesting new blogs for you. So this is traditional artificial intelligence. Whereas in future, if Kindle or Netflix implements generative artificial intelligence, what it would look like. Let me explain. So the Netflix generative AI can be so powerful that it can create a new movie or a web series depending upon your watching preference. So after spending one month on Netflix, Netflix generative AI can understand what sort of data or what kind of content are you consuming and it can create a new movie altogether for you. Or Kindle's generative AI can be so powerful that it can create or it can write a new blog or a new book according to your reading preference. So generative AI can be such powerful. Now, Okay, this is about future. Can we talk about the generative AI real life use cases that are available as of today? Of course, ChatGPT. Like I told you, ChatGPT is just one type of generative AI which uses LLMs. So ChatGPT is majorly focused on text-based generative AI, which is, it is based on LLMs and GPTs, where if you ask ChatGPT, to write a Python script for your use case. Probably this use case of Python script that you are asking ChatGPT is not available anywhere on the internet, but it can write a new Python script for you. Why? Because it is based on generative AI. For example, Midjourney. Midjourney is another sort of generative AI. It is based on GANs. And Midjourney is capable of creating a new image or a picture that does not exist on internet. So you can ask Midjourney to create image of a person who is eating burger. So Midjourney creates a new image that does not exist on internet. So in a short, how does this happen? Basically, Midjourney uses GAN where there is a generator and there is a discriminator. So generator tries to create new content and discriminator provides feedback. So it tells generator, okay, you can be much better. And after a while, generator becomes so powerful that it can create a new image altogether. So this is fundamentally how it works, but I don't want to go into detail of it. For now, just try to understand in today's life, there is generative AI use cases that are available such as chat GPT mid journey, but they are just tip of iceberg in future. Generative AI is going to be so powerful and it will be available in each and every field stream and use cases. You will see generative AI in the field of pharma. You will see generative AI in any field that you want to. Now, how did generative AI become so powerful? Okay, one thing to say is generative AI has always been there. 
but with the growing advancement of the data that is becoming available with the powerful compute that is becoming available and of course because of the open source there is a lot of open source technologies that are available out there because of all of these things generative ai has become so powerful and there is yet to be yet a lot to be explored in the field of generative ai and in future i'll be making videos on generative ai like i told you there are a lot of topics to be covered in generative ai llms is just one part there is gan there is vae that is available in the generative ai there is content or creative ai that is available in the field of generative ai and we will try to understand all of these concepts in future videos but this is what i have in today's video i hope you understood what is generative ai in very simple language thank you so much for watching today's video see you all in the next one